All right, so uh, let's get comfortable. So I'm in the parking lot right now because I'm able to actually record without being interrupted. So we're gonna do a car. So today's gonna be a car chat. Um, I just wanted to share with you some of the things that I'm gonna be doing for Black History Month this month. And also um, share with you what my school is doing and try to also get ideas from other people about what they're doing that maybe I can implement next month. So I want this video to be like 10 minutes or less. So let's get right into it, okay? All right. <laughs> All right, so first I want to start off by saying welcome and or welcome back. My name is Sharanda and I'm a second grade teacher here in South Carolina. Um, I do teaching. I will eventually start doing lifestyle vlogs and things like that. But if that's something that you enjoy, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. So let's get right into it. So some of the things that, well, first off, Black History Month to me is celebrating the accomplishments of all Black people, no matter where they are in the world. Um, and celebrating them for the things that they've done and how they've overcome in some type, a certain type of way. Um, and just really showing black people where we've come from, how far we've come and how far we have to go um, moving forward into the future. And so when I came up with the things that I want to do for Black History Month, for me personally, it is not about white people. Black History Month to me is not about white people. It is not about nobody else, but people who are black or who I or who are black period um and so when it comes to talking about certain things I try to only focus on black people and I'll share more of that later on in a little bit but this is all about black people to me and so any non-factors non-factor non-factors um I try not to get too much into because it's not about them they've had their time to shine now it's black people's time to shine and so one of the ways that I celebrate Black History Month in my classroom is for the whole month of social, during social studies time, we learn about one new African-American contributor in the, right now it's in the United States, just in the United States, but just in the past, like in the 1800s, 1900s, and then we have a few from like who were alive during the 2000s. And so, um, so far we've done people like Jackie Robinson, Tomorrow we're doing CJ, Madam C.J. Walker, we're doing Harriet Tubman, Frederick Douglass, um, Jesse, no, no, Bessie Coleman. Um, we learned about Scott Joplin, or Joplin, one of the two is a musician. Him. Um, we've also talked about Sojourner Truth and a few others. And for me personally, when I, because I'm the one that creates the social studies, when I was creating all the black history or African American contributors, I tried to steer away from those we always talk about. So, for instance, we always talk about Martin Luther King. We all, he has a whole day. We always talk about Rosa Parks. And there's just certain African American figures that we always talk about. And I'm sure that if we don't talk about them, this year in second grade they will get it somewhere else just because I feel like we made some figures the face of black history um when honestly and this is no shade they weren't the only ones fighting for rights they weren't the only ones that did great things and there are even people behind the scenes that helped them to get to where they are and so I'm just now learning about certain things about my history and about how Rosa Parks came to be and how Martin Luther King came to be. There are people before them that made contributions to our culture. And so to not talk about them one year, I think I'm fine. And so just to help kids see that there's more to black history than Martin Luther King or Rosa Parks. And even we talked about Harriet Tubman, but even Harriet Tubman, they knew about her um, and other figures that we talk about every single year. And for me, once I got older and actually started researching for myself, I realized that there were more people in the civil rights movement than Martin Luther King, Jesse Jackson, Rosa Parks, and all of them. It was more people than that. Um, and so helping the kids to see that there are people that we're gonna learn about that you will probably never ever hear after this unless you do research on your own. And so that's what I tried to focus on. Um, and so I, I think I've done a pretty good job. There's still some that are, I probably could have taken out and replaced with people we don't know. 
but there are a lot of them that we haven't talked about like Madam CJ Walker I don't think any of them have heard about that we're doing that tomorrow we're doing Simone Biles Michael Jackson um, Oprah I don't think they know who Oprah is which is surprising so that is how we're gonna celebrate and recognize people during our social studies time I also have tons of books centered around black history but I was looking and I noticed that a lot of my, my books center around the struggle or the pain and the hurt of being a black American or being black in the United States or wherever and I have a lot of books on slavery the civil rights movement and those are great those are very important and they need to be taught however we are more than just working for somebody for free without getting paid we are more than just marching and fight for rights but we can do more things than that and i want to them to show i want us to be seen in a positive light and not just slavery and civil rights so um i've been trying to purchase books that are that showcase that so that we can have more positive images of ourselves so um sometimes i read books to them sometimes i will download a book from youtube and post it on Seesaw for them to read and answer questions about. Um, and so that's how I incorporated that for social studies. I'm also this Friday planning on decorating my door. Um, not that that's a huge deal, but I think it's very, I think it's another way to just um, make sure that I'm recognizing this month is to decorate my door. I have a couple of ideas that I pinned from Pinterest. And my sister, after I pick my sister up on Friday, she's going to come and help me put it together. Um, next thing, the one I'm most excited about is our playlist. So I have Apple Music and that's something I can access in school. And so um, I told my kids like the day before Black History Month of February 1st, I was like, I'm going to create a list with all Black um, artists. And y'all, they were so excited. And I was telling how we're going to send Michael Jackson, Stevie Wonder and things like that. They were really excited about the Michael Jackson one. So um, I play those songs um, and I'll actually include that playlist down below. It's Apple Music um, for a warning. But I have like Stevie Wonder. I have Whitney Houston. I have Michael Jackson. I have some Princess and the Frog stuff. I have Raven Simone, Brandy. I have India Ari. I have non kids bop songs because I'm not really a big fan of kids bop. So I tried to find songs that were clean and that were appropriate from an actual artist, the person that actually sung the song. So I will include that down below. And they're clean songs. They're appropriate. Um, some of them highlight like um, positivity in the black community. So. I will include that playlist down below. It's about 20 songs, but every time like I hear a song on the radio or something like that, I will quickly shazam it or add it to my playlist so that way I can have it and they can listen to it the next day. And they've been loving it. Like my kids love to dance. So every time they hear a beat from one of the songs on the playlist, they're dancing, they're singing. Cause some of the songs they know, but most of the songs they don't know. One of their favorite songs right now is ABC by the Jackson 5. And then they also like beat it. And then like almost there by um, Anika Rose who played Tiana in Princess and the Frog. Um, so yeah, and those that's also something else that I'm doing. And then next, um, so during our lunchtime, we play... Uh, well, we eat, we have to eat in our classroom, and normally during that time, I play a video or a movie. Usually, it's like Magic Treehouse, Electric Company, Maya and Miguel, or Dragon Tales, or something like that. But this month, um, I've been really trying to play videos where the character, where all the characters are black, or at least the main character is black, and so that shows like Little Bill. They're not too interested in that, honestly. I saw this other one called Cousin Skeeter. I need to preview that first. I think it'll be okay, but I need to preview that one first before I watch it just to make sure. Um, Cousin Skeeter, I'm going to look into. Also, we tried a new one today. It was called Seema's World, and y'all, my kids loved it. They were so quiet. Um, it was about a black girl who lived in Africa. I'm not sure what part. And she was a superhero there. And so, you know, doing all the superhero things. And my kids were so quiet for that. So I'm going to actually find another one of that and put it, play it tomorrow. There were a couple others that I found that are on YouTube um, or either on Hulu too. So if you have Hulu. So the crazy thing is we 
are blocked on Netflix. The teachers are blocked on Netflix, but we have access to Hulu and we have access to Disney Plus and Amazon Prime. So I'm gonna link a couple of the shows that I plan on previewing and watching to see if it was appropriate for my kids, which I'm sure it is, but just in case, um, just to add to the collection. So I'm gonna include those down below. If I, I'm only gonna include them after I watch them and think that they're good. So I'm gonna include those down below and I'm gonna let you know like which streaming platform you can find them on. Um, I really wanted to include Karma's, Karma's World, but I think that's on Netflix or maybe I'm lying. It might be on Disney Plus, so I'll have to check because I saw that on TikTok and that it was about a black little girl. And let's see, I have my notes in, let's see. I think the last thing that I wanted to add was, I'm thinking that since we're spending social studies doing talking about Af African American contributors, I think my kids are ready for like a research project, like some not, not anything major, but something they can do in like a day or two where I give them a figure and they can go on epic and read a book about them write down different information and things like that um and i'm going to probably do more next year but i even thought about letting them do their research project and then having them dress up like that person and present their project but that probably won't be until next year because this is so last minute but i definitely think i'm going to let them do the research project just because there's so many people that we could talk about and i want them to get the opportunity to be able to research a person and get more information with, from them on their own. And so I really want to do that the last week of February. And so now I want it to lead into uh, the things I want to do next year. And also talking about how my school is celebrating Pot History Month. So I've already told you, you know, what I'm doing, like the social studies, watching the videos during lunch, reading books, displaying books, and I got my list, the music playlist that I have from Apple Music. that I, I created it, by the way. And the research project and things like that and the decorating the door. However, I don't think, honestly, my school is doing anything for Black History Month. And like I listen for the morning announcements every day for them to maybe mention it. Um, maybe I'm wrong, but I haven't heard them say anything. I even asked my sister who's in high school and her school is like five minutes up the street. We live in, we go to, I work at, in the same district that she goes to school. And so I asked her, I was like, hey, did they even mention anything about Black History Month? She was like, maybe, but I'm not for sure. And I just feel a little discouraged and a little, I don't want to say, I don't want this to be negative, but discouraged and disappointed a little bit because this is a very important month, just like Hispanic Heritage Month, just like Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month and all those things. These are important months because they showcase and highlight people who are may not who may not always be recognized in a positive light, um, especially in the United States. And so this is our opportunity to show how amazing this particular group is, the culture that they have and things. This is our opportunity and when schools are in districts are not taking it or not e at least putting in an effort to do it, it makes me a little bit scared, especially when you have the demographic to do this. And even if you don't have the demographic, it's still important to know. And so it makes me a little disappointed that maybe my school isn't doing anything and not that they have to do much because we're in the pandemic. There's only so much that we can do, but to see that there's no effort so far being put into this, um, it's a little disheartening and then to wonder if the school is not doing anything are the teachers even doing anything and so I'm a little disappointed about that but I'm not going to say anything because the school year is not over with so I'm going to give it a little bit of time um, and if you have any ideas that maybe I could send out to leadership I don't know um, at the things that maybe your school is doing please let me know because um I'm not the confrontational type, but I think that this along with the other heritage lunches are very important and for us to not even be recognizing it or putting any effort into recognizing it is a little disheartening. And so I thought my, oh, I won't even say that, but it's a little disheartening. And so I just hope next year, maybe we can do a little bit more. Um, 
and so yeah that's my piece on that so if you have any ideas or even if you have anything that you do in your classroom that I did not mention please list them below because I'm always looking for ways to improve next year because I'm always adding more and doing more each year just to kind of improve the experience because I know I could always be doing more this year but you know um I'm adding a little bit by little so I don't get too overwhelmed with trying to do all these things at once and so just looking for next year because this video is also for me so that I can look back on it and see what I can do differently next year one of the things that I want to do is have like a dress up day um I think where I dress up as different eras or decades from black culture whether it's dressing in African attire to represent how we were here we have history before slavery whether it's to dress up like the t what we imagine to be like the black panther member i don't know if that's appropriate but we'll have to, I'll have to check on that um dressing up like different figures from our culture and our history um also i know like different different stories and things have like black t-shirts and things that are specific to Black History Month that I would love to purchase just to get the conversation flowing with within my classroom. So I think I would want to do a dress up, different dress up days, whether that's a t-shirt or actually a whole outfit. Um, just a couple of pointers before I get off because I'm past my, t my 10 minute mark. Um, one, realizing that Black history does not start at slavery. There was a history way before slavery. And I think with the way that curriculum is set up, it only shows, like I said earlier, black people either in bondage as slaves or their segregation, civil rights movement and all that stuff. But realizing, I think that's what I want to do next year. Really hone in even before we get into contributors. Look at what, what, what were the lives of African-Americans before they got to the United States like what was their culture in Africa what is the culture like in Africa and really show them that before there were slaves there was a rich culture rich history in Africa before we came here or before our ancestors came here so that is one of the things I really want to research this summer and get together or just before the next Black History Month um, but just realizing that Black history started before um slavery before civil rights movement and all those things also um i used to hate history because in school because i never saw myself in history i never saw black people in history there were three times where i saw black people once again if we were slaves um when we were talking about like civil rights and when we were talking about them being musicians or artists like the Harlem Renaissance and things like that those were the only three times that I saw myself which is very discouraging and so really using this is why I say not celebrating it is even more heartbreaking when we have the opportunity to recognize people and celebrate a particular group of people and we just don't um so um yeah I hated history but now after I've been able to research history on my own researching things that interest me I I love history and I love the story that it tells and I think this goes for me as a reflection for myself really showing my kids when I'm teaching history um themselves and other people within a particular topic that we're talking about so they don't feel as disconnected from the text or from the content and that they really understand because I hated history because of how it was presented and who we were always talking about if you're catching my drift so yeah those are the things that I think about the most um and the last thing is not all like I said earlier not always celebrating the typical historical figures because they can never be forgotten obviously but really honing in on those figures that maybe miss the mark or are not talked about at all like just the other day I was watching Drunk History on Comedy Central and they were talking about how the the little girl who came before Rosa Parks and it was very sad to me because we talk about Rosa Parks but we don't talk about I think her name was Claudette Colvin 
if I'm wrong, I'll put her real name down. And how she was actually, she came before Rosa Parks and she was the one who refused to give up her seat. But because she was so young, she was a little 15 year old girl, they did not want her to be the face of this bus boycott and the, instead decided to make Rosa Parks, who was lighter and more fair at skin, they want her to be the face of the movement. And I never knew that. I learned that on Drunk History on Comedy Central. That's ridiculous. And so I think including someone like her is great. And including someone like a group of people like Little Rock Nine in Arkansas, talking about them or talking about the Tulsa massacre, things that just don't make it in the curriculum. These are things that I've learned in the past two to three years. And it's crazy how I went through 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16 plus years of school. I'm in grad school and I never learned about a lot of these things. And it's crazy because like, how do I have that much social studies content under my belt? And I know none of this stuff. And it's always coming out in TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, just places where you would think I wouldn't learn it when I'm supposed to be learning it in school. And so really honing in on those facts and on those that content and topics that don't always get talked about. Talking about freedom riders, I was watching a documentary on that. Talking about that in a um, way that children can really understand. Because what I'm noticing for me is, like when I'm talking about Harriet Tubman, Frederick Douglass, like I said, I'm not focusing on people who are not black and who aided in, our, in the struggle to be free. I'm not talking about them because this month is not about them. Um, but when I talk about them, like I said, I try not to focus on slavery that much and about how white people were to black people, if I'm just going to be blunt, and how Europeans were to black people and African people. I try not to focus on that because, like I said, it's not about them. But on the flip side, there is a small piece that I give to my kids, but I'm realizing that I probably need to give them a little bit more because they're in second grade. Because when we talk about Harriet Tubman and Frederick Douglass, they kind of get the idea of how slavery was, but they don't really understand. Um, so yeah, that's just my spill. That's my car chat. And I feel like I should just upload this just like this. I don't know, we'll see. Um, but yeah, those are my thoughts on Black History Month. And in my next video, I'll actually be sharing with you some of my the books that I'll be displaying or either reading to them to my kids that I'm really excited about so yeah thank you so much for coming to my car chat don't forget to like comment and subscribe and I will see you in the next video peace